After you've finished your 40 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, we're going to start our decrease rounds. So you just take your yarn marker, move it up to where you left off, and then we're going to start the increase rounds. For the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. So you take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. You have two loops on the hook. Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decrease stitch. Or it's also called single, single crochet two together. So I'm going to do one more set with you. One single crochet into five stitches. And then we're going to make our decrease stitch, or we're going to single crochet two together. So you go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, two loops on your hook, go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decrease stitch. Go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. You can see how I'm almost back to the yarn marker. I only have about four stitches left. I'm just going to put one single crochet into every remaining stitch. Then you take and move your yarn marker up for the next decrease round. For this decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. and then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into four stitches and then your decrease stitch. You can put your craft stuffing into the body at any time as you're closing and you can even put more as you're closing the body. For the next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then your decrease stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to your yarn marker. Then for the next decrease round one single crochet into two stitches and then your decrease stitch. You should see how it's starting to close and you could stuff it as you're closing. For the next decrease round you're just going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then your decrease stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then you're just going to make decrease stitches all the way around until it's almost closed. Then come back and I'm going to show you how to slip stitch it closed. So decrease rounds all the way around until you're almost closed and then come back and I'll show you how to slip stitch it closed. Now you can see how I'm almost closed. Now to slip stitch it closed, you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to do that all the way around until you're completely closed. Oop. 
I'll do that one again. And then when it's completely closed, you can go ahead and finish off. I'm going to do one more, make one more. And then you, to finish off, you just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you just take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end. You're going to go in where you tied your knot and then come out anywhere. Then just cut the loose yarn end and it buries it nicely. Then we're going to go back to the head. You're going to go to one of the sides of the head and I like to go where there's a loose yarn end and then just take your crochet hook go into the side stitch you want to bring up a loop with your yarn and chain one go ahead and tie a knot with the loose yarn end to secure it. Then you're just going to take your loose yarn end and place it right before your work so you can kind of keep track of the rounds. Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and you're just going to make a single crochet into every stitch around until you've completed four rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed four rounds. When you get to under the snout just come back and I'll work that portion with you. Now I've reached the snout and I go ahead and just grab the bottom stitch of the snout for just a couple stitches. And then I'm back onto the head portion of the dog. And this is how it looks so far. Then after you finish the four rounds of one single crochet in every stitch you're going to go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So a slip stitch into the next stitch over just go into the next stitch yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew down the wrinkle in the neck. Then you're just going to take your tapestry needle, put it onto the long end that you left for sewing, and go ahead and fold down that those four rows that you made. And then you're just going to sew in about half of it, halfway down. Just sew it down right at the top portion or should say the bottom rim to the inside of the head because you're full you're forming this fold which will be the wrinkle at the bottom of the head and then you're just going to sew the wrinkle in place by sewing right at the bottom only so that you have a wrinkle fold and you're going to do that all the way around. Careful not to sew over the purple of the snout. 
You just want to go right at the base and just sew it all the way around and then come back. This is how mine looks. You can see how I have a little bit of a wrinkle fold now. On the other dog that I made, Prince, he has a little bit of more of a wrinkle underneath here because of the style of yarn, but he has the same number of rows. If you want her wrinkle to be a little bit larger, you would just make more rounds of single crochet instead of four, maybe five or six. But I'm happy with this size for her, so I stuck with the four rounds. And now you're ready to sew the head onto the body. Go ahead and get some same colored yarn onto your tapestry needle for sewing and put some craft stuffing into the head. Then you're going to take and line up the head onto the body. You want the side that you didn't close onto the front and this is what the back side will be where you closed it. You want to line up the nose of the dog with the center of the front of the body and then you're going to take and go through the body and up through the wrinkle. So you want to come in with your tapestry needle through the area that you sewed down with the wrinkle. Make sure that you leave a loose yarn end on the body for, sew for burying into your work. Then you're just going to go back down and out through the body near where you went in with your tapestry needle. Then you can go ahead and tie a knot. You can always realign the head again as you're sewing. Yep. So you're going to make sure that it's snug. I'm going to redo the knot and then come back. I'm going to redo the knot so that it's snug against the body. There. Now you can take your tapestry needle and you're just going to sew. If you want, came out on the body, then you're going to go back in the body and up through the head. But when you come in through the head, you want to make sure that you're going along where you sewed that wrinkle. See so that you keep the wrinkle in the design. And then you're just going to go underneath the snout, sewing the wrinkle in place, making sure that the nose stays straight. And then you can make more than one round as you're sewing. So if you didn't sew it down completely, you can sew it down completely on the next round as you're sewing the head in place. Because the most important thing is making sure that your head's not crooked. Also, you can add more stuffing to as you're working, making sure that your head is shaped the way that you want it to be. This is how mine looks so far. You can see how I have the wrinkle fold. I still have a lot of gaps where I need to sew it down completely, but I just did one quick round to keep the head in place and the nose straight with the front of the body because I want to make sure my head is straight. Now I can go around and make sure it's sewn tightly on in place. To bury your loose yarn ends, you just take your tapestry needle, you go in where you tied your knot, and just come out anywhere on the body. And then just cut your loose yarn end. Once you have the head sewn on, you can see how you have the little wrinkle flap all the way around and then we want to put more wrinkles in and to do that you're just going to take the same colored yarn as the body and your tapestry needle and you're just going to fold in the wrinkles where you want them and then once you've folded it then you just take your tapestry needle and go through the wrinkle 
Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn in for burying into your work. And then you're just going to go right back in. See if I can do this. And then come out right where you went in. And then you're just going to tie a knot. Then you're just going to follow the wrinkle up around where you want it. And mine, I'm going to fold it up along the bottom of the neck wrinkle onto the back. And then you just go in and out at the base of the wrinkle, sewing it in place so it stays. And then you just place your wrinkles wherever you want them for your dog and then come back. So you can see how I placed a couple of wrinkles on both sides and now I'm going to show you how to make the feet. I made the front and the back feet all the same. You're going to need four of them. I'm going to show you how to make them. You're going to start with a magic circle just like we did for the snout, just take the yarn, drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go under the two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through that loop for a slip knot. And again, you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your middle finger, I mean your forefinger and your thumb, and just hold the base of the six single crochet. You have those two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one to close. If it doesn't close, you let go and pull on the other one. This one's closing. Just gently close it. You can close it more later. Grab the loose yarn in and pull on that. Then you're just going to turn your work to the first stitch, and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12. And then come back. This is how my work looks so far. I have 12 stitches around the magic circle. I'm going to close the center of the magic circle by turning it over and pulling on the loose yarn end. Then we're going to start our increase rounds. So we're going to increase the same way we did for the body and the snout, except for the foot, you're going to increase to one in five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. So for the first one, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker just like we did for the snout and the body, except you're going to increase to one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch and then come back. After you finish the last increase round of one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch, then you're going to take and move the yarn marker to where you left off and you're only going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch. So one round of one single crochet in every stitch and then come back. Now you're going to make 12 decrease stitches. So you're going to take your yarn marker, move it up, then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, 
three loops on your hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decreased stitch. And then you're going to make uh, 12 of them. So that's one, two, So I need one more for 12, and then you just want to make sure that your loose yarn end is on the inside cup as you're working. For the rest of the stitches, you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to take your yarn marker and move it up and you're going to make one round of just one single crochet in every stitch and then come back. Then you're going to take and move the yarn marker up and you're going to make six decrease stitches. So six decreased stitches, that's two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker and then come back. This is how my foot looks so far. I have 24 stitches around. Now you're just going to take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off and you're going to make only one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 18 rounds and then come back. So 18 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. This is what mine looks like after completing 17 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Now you can take your craft stuffing and put it into the foot. Now we're just going to close the foot and you can add craft stuffing as you're making your decrease rounds. For the first decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. If you have any remaining stitches before the yarn marker, I just put a single crochet in any remaining stitches. Then for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then make your decrease stitch. Then one single crochet in three stitches and then your decrease stitch. Then you just want to make sure you have plenty of stuffing in the foot before we close it. Now you're just going to make decrease stitches all the way around until you're almost closed and then come back and I'll show you how to slip stitch it closed. Now to slip stitch closed you just skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, then yarn over and turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook, just like we've done for the body for the body. And 
Then, when it's closed, you just finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through just to bury the loose yarn end. Then you just take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end, go right in where you tied the knot, come out anywhere, and then just cut your loose yarn end. And then you have your foot. You need four of these. Now I'm going to show you how to put the feet on the dog. So you're going to need two of the front legs first, and you want to position the feet so you know how you want them on the body. And then once you know about where you want the foot, then I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it is to get your same colored yarn on your tapestry needle, and then you're going to take the feet, make sure that you have the paws facing forward, and you're going to go about six rows down, counting this very top row, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. You know that you're going to be going in the side. Make sure that your front foot, again, is facing forward and that you're in the middle of the foot, and you're going to go through to the opposite side at the same level. Make sure you come out the opposite side at the same level. Make sure you go through one of the holes because we're going to pull the yarn tight and we don't want to go through snag it. So you're going to go through one of the holes. You're going to pull the yarn through the first leg making sure to leave plenty of loose yarn end. Then you're just going to position the leg and I'm going about from the center of the magic circle on the front, I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 16 rows back on the body, mid-body. And you're going to go in through one of the holes and you're going to go through the other side at the same level. So you can see how I went through the body of the dog. And you don't have to pull the yarn tight yet. You can just let it lie loose. Then you're going to grab the other leg and you want to make sure again that the front paw is facing forward and then you're going to go right through the same area that you did about mid about six rows down and then go through the other leg going through to the opposite side at the same level make sure you don't snag the yarn, go through one of the holes. Then you're just going to go about a stitch over at the same level. You're going to go back through, come out the other side, about a stitch over. And then just pull the yarn through. Then you're going to go right through the body about a stitch over, go right through the body to the other side, and you're going to come out about a stitch over. Make sure you don't poke yourself. And then you can see how you're going through the leg, then the body, and now you want to go through the other leg. So you're going to go about a stitch over. It can even be down. As long as it's around, about a stitch around where you went out the previous time. And then come out 
on the opposite side about the same level and a stitch over and then I like to go twice so you're going to go back through another time before we pull the yarn and pull the legs close to the body. So go ahead, go through one more time and then come back. So you can see how I went through twice. And then I'm going to take my two strands of yarn and just pull the legs towards the body as tight as you want them. I like to have them very snug. And then you're just going to tie a knot. making sure that the legs are pulled tight towards the body. And then you can see how the body, the legs are right, they move up and down and they're close, snug to the body. And then you're going to sew the back legs on the exact same way. For the back of the body, you want to make sure that you go in at a point where the leg is even with the front leg and that the back paw of course is facing forward. And this is how the back legs look on mine. They go up and down. To make the tail you're going to use the magic circle again the same way. You're going to put six single crochet into the magic circle just like we did before. And then you're going to grab the base of the magic circle. Go ahead and close it. Then you're going to put two single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 12. You can close up the magic circle if you need to. Then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 28 rounds. So 28 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. As you're putting the rounds in the tail, you may want to put your craft stuffing in as your working to make it a little bit easier or you can wait to the end whichever you want to do. Then once you're finished with the 28 rows of one single crochet in every stitch and you finished stuffing the tail then you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull a lot of yarn through to sew the tail onto the dog and put the curl into the tail. The first thing you want to do is just center and sew the base of the tail in place. So just go in and out with your tapestry needle along the base of the tail, sewing it in place. Then you just take and curl the tail the way you want it positioned and then sew the curl in place. And this is what my curl looks like after I sewed it in place.
Now you can dress up the dogs how you want them. You can see the difference. This one is Prince and this one's Pixie. You can see the difference with the different yarn. I actually preferred the Karen one pound yarn. This is the Red Heart. They both turned out good. They both will work, but I actually preferred the Karen one pound. It's a little stiffer yarn. And I actually like the color, the cream color and the black that combination, but it's easier to record with the lighter colors. And I actually like how she turned out too, but they're the exact same pattern. Just different colored yarns and the eyes, they use different colors. So Prince has the solid black and then she has a little bit of aqua color to her eyes, but they're both 18 millimeter and the noses are the plastic safety noses and they're both 18 millimeters also. I used real pet clothes this is a reflective strap on this Chewbacca, Star Wars Chewbacca outfit that will fit a real dog. And then he also has a real collar on with his name tag Prince and it says Peace, Love, Rescue. So now I'm going to show you how I put Pixie's outfit on. I actually got her a real body harness, medium. Both dogs have a medium sized outfit on. What's nice about this outfit for Pixie. It actually could be used for a real dog and this is where the leash would go. It's a, actually a body harness. On the other side you have these snap snaps and then also you have the velcro for around the body. You can see how it fits perfectly on her. The velcro on the bottom and then it snaps right in the front. And I also got her a real collar. It's a smoochy poochy collar. It's elastic. For her collar I put the heart right under the snap for the outfit and you could see how it looks if you just wanted the collar itself. And if it, I put it right over the wrinkle Then I'm going to go ahead and attach her name tag right to the heart on the collar. And this is what her name tag looks like on her collar and what her outfit looks like. If you like the painted toenails, I just took the same colored, deeper purple color, put it onto the tapestry needle, and then you just take the paw and you go in through the side of the foot. Count up three rows. You want to make it make it straight. So I'm going to go in here. Go up three rows. Make sure you leave enough yarn for tying a knot and burying the loose yarn in. Then you're going to come down and in where you first went through. Go over two stitches to the center. Don't pull too tight. You still want the claw to show up. Then you're going to go straight down three. One, two, three. And you're going to go in at an angle and up three rows and over two. So you can see how I went diagonally to the inner portion of the paw. So now I have one, two, then you're going to go down straight down three and then over to where you first went in with your tapestry needle. And that will make your third painted toenail. Then you can just tie a knot and bury your loose yarn ends. So this is what her toenails all look like when I'm done. And all of these doggy items will fit a real dog, which is really nice. And then even these little hair piece clips will fit a real dog. And they fit really nice through the crochet holes.